here is Summer Schaefer. Um, she's approaching her final year in the MFA program at San Francisco State, where she's working on two collections of stories. You can read her first publications, currently or forthcoming, later this summer in Barge Journal, 1111, Kill Author, Sparkle and Blink, and in Volume 15 at bangoutsf.com. Please join me in welcoming Summer Schaefer. It was the age of the road, and all that was good was there. Bumbling along, the five of us and one dog and Earl the Eldorado bought reverently, enthusiastically, with Grandma's death money, so that we could travel in style. Bye, I'd wave to each leaving town. Father's job long past sabotaged. A whole host of friends and neighbors that had never been. We thought of them spitefully, as outsiders do as if they had purposefully harmed us in some way. There, my spot, staring out the wide back window, knees on couch, elbows against the narrow metal frame of the window, watching our empty rental grow smaller, giddy inside with the thought of leaving, the thought of the road. Ahead, our Eden, which would never be, but still in between, the glorious road. Sonny had thrown the football somewhere in the Yukon Territory. Father waited to catch it. We were returning to Alaska after leaving it a decade ago. Sonny hated the thought of leaving Chicago with its colors and ghettos and rap, knew for a fact that everyone in Alaska would be racist, narrow-minded, dumpy. Even on the road, already long gone, 14-year-old Sonny wore his pants the way his gang did at Lincolnwood, around his hips, a t-shirt enormous. When he looked into the camera, a couple dozen photos, he dared time dared it to capture the awful moment again and again. But in this photo, Sonny's hair blazing golden from the low autumn sun behind, the tundra one ruddy expanse hiding little blue gooseberries, the tree's leaves around deep dark red and yellow glowing lighter from the reach of the sun, there is simply his firm football player build. The contented command of the ball that spurred on the throw, the action of which has just passed the photo mere seconds before, but whose presence still encapsulates him, lingers there among his strong shoulders. The football has left his hands and hangs buoyant in the air, a shape cast into silhouette by the tundra sky's sun, cresting the land into the northern blue sky that shocks the system like kindness. Somewhere between South Dakota and Glacier National Park, father gave up stop telling Sonny to be pleasant. Finally, if you're going to be unpleasant, keep it to yourself. And as an afterthought, and smile in the photos. He pointed his big, blunt finger right into Sonny's face. Without a word, Sonny dared him, dared him to change his attitude. Father simply shook his head, said, you disappoint me. I kept waiting for the roads back to Alaska to be the same roads they were when we had left Alaska 10 years ago. I had remembered crossing into Montana, smelling the fields and fields of sweet un-Alaskan nests, subtle hills of feathery green grasses that smelled of tameness, of nearby dairy farms, of diners, and in all of that for their uniqueness to us or possibly for their sense of a return to the familiarity of our birthland in the Midwest, the smell of possibility, hope, belonging. How could I forget that giant green dinosaur perched atop a hilly rest stop, the one sat Sunny Alice and I climbed and played on with jubilant abandon until it was time to go? And yet, where had it gone? Crossing from Montana this time, it had been nowhere. This time, Sonny rode Earl with his hood and earphones on, even when we passed the endless acres of from here to the horizon prairies of the Dakotas, through which I could imagine the Sioux streaming through on their awesome horses right for us, and the Badlands and the crazy waterfall falls of Yellowstone. Want to play authors? Alice would ask. One of the games that had sustained us a decade ago, and the years before that and in, and in between along the road. Nah, Sonny would say. Even I had to admit to myself, reluctantly, that game was getting too young for us and losing all its delight. 
The football hangs buoyant in the air on its way to father who stands into the tundra. He is the smaller figure. Earl is parked askance along the side of the awkward road that bears down and into the wilderness with lovely insignificance. Alice, mother, and I are there. Father, even though smaller, shares too that football body, those shoulders and chest, his feet apart, balanced, anticipatory. There, in the boundarylessness of sunny, sun-blurred face, is the faintest smile, detectable almost, even among the grand wilderness all around, sucking us up like particles of flighty matter, and the moose and wolf and bear roaming the forest in the periphery, and the world glowing from the insides of red leaves and golden light and ruddy tundra and translucent sky and barely discernible gooseberry and crumbling grateful road, just to be there. Today I've settled with abandonment, married two kids, a talk show host for a cat, three golden fish that swirl, twirl, bubble, give chase in their apparent ignorance, a counter full of dirty dishes and corners crowded by wispy whirls of dust and hair and dirt and spiders waiting out their days in gleeful inconspicuousness. Father is long gone, ashes in the river. Sunny, Alice, mother, Earl, dispersed. But in times of despair, with my face stuffed full of the reality of my impending demise, or the utter nonsense of the groups I find myself a part of and the ones I do not, or the heaviness of an earth crowded with ego. I remember that at one point on the road, the tundra had been ruddy. Ptarmigan and owl had lain, lain low in camouflaged rapture. Sonny had thrown the football. Father waited there to catch it. <laughs>